Okay, guys, listen. Quarantine is so messed up. Kind of scary. I was just watching your YouTube videos, and here I am. I have the gift of ubiquity, darling. I can be in four places at the same time. Uh, oh, thank you. Love, love to Bahrain, too. Hi, hi, guys. Hello, everybody. Hello to the whole world. Hello to all my coronavirus freedom fighters. Not the freedom of the coronavirus, but fighting against the coronavirus. So I hope everybody's uh, doing well. I hope you're all as healthy as you can be. And uh, yeah, I'm in the bunker. And listen, so, okay, I, like, whatever, you know. <laughs> I have a couple of things to, to say. So I know not everybody, we're in financial situations right now, blah, 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 yada, yada. I know it's not so easy. My hair is growing like crazy. I think I'm going to be another one of those homemade haircut people at a certain point, but I might just shave it all off. Um, I was thinking, so I've been reading this book uh, on my Patreon um, on a daily basis, every day a new chapter. And just to give you a little bit of an idea, because, you know, there's nothing better than reading when you're at home. And But it's not just about reading. I love biographies and I love discovering the past and I love discovering times that have been better than the times we're living in right now. I think this escapism is in general, we're all, we would all like to be happier right now. And I think we would all like to be more free. And I think we would all like to have more positive vibes around us in general. So I started reading the life of Mesia and Mesia, just to let you know, Mesia was one of the biggest patrons of her time. You know, we're talking beginning of 1900s into the First World and Second World War, but the Belle Epoque and this entire first, the beginning of, of the past century was so particularly special uh, because for those who were in love with the arts, they've experienced the boom in terms of expression and people have learned. For us, we take it for granted that we can be psychological and dramatic in movies and art and photography. But back then, it wasn't that, it wasn't taken for granted. It was something that they were just learning to then to deal with the idea of being free or, or painting an emotion, transforming an interior, inter, the interiorized emotion, transferring it to a painting or transferring it through text on, into a book. And uh, so I'm just going to read a little tiny paragraph from Misa just to give you a feeling of the Belle Epoque, uh, which is described in this wonderful book, which is a the biography of Misia Sert, who was also Coco Chanel's best friend. Or frenemy, we would like to say today. They were they loved each other. They loved to love each other. They loved to hate each other. The life of Misia Sad by Arthur Gold and Robert Fisdale. So, of course, the full chapters and stuff you can get on my Patreon, and not on YouTube. Also, because like you can't really do this stuff on YouTube. So, but here's a little bit just to get you all guys going. So before I read, let's see. Hi, Jacob. Love from Singapore. Oh, love, love to you too. Uh, what's up, the yeah. Yeah, all good. All good, girl. We're all doing good. How's it going? Okay, quick. I'm going to... For the few people that are online right now, let me give you a feeling of the Belle Epoque. Uh, the Belle Epoque could not have been a more beautiful time for those who were privileged. And Misia and Tade truly were. Young and attractive, they had plenty of money and time to enjoy it. They lived for pleasure, and, greatest privilege of all, their deepest pleasure lay in their enjoyment of art. With an unearing eye for what was best in new art, they were among the few who were able to read the paintings of their contemporaries in much the way we read them today. And they responded to the new in music, literature, and the theater with insights that reached most people only many years later. With the excitement of explorers, they discovered that new art was speaking to them and describing their emotions. Though not artists themselves, they felt art as artists do. So you can imagine how it was back then to, for the first time ever, I don't know, see sadness painted in a painting, and, and, and but, but painted in such a beautiful way that that sadness kind of attracted you and made you feel what the artist was feeling. And I think what is so important is um, to say that uh, 
even though Mizia, who was a patron of the arts, she was not an artist herself, even though I would like to, I don't know, I, we could discuss that. I mean, she was a pianist herself, but let's just say if she wasn't a painter, right? Um, even though not an artist herself, she could feel as artists feel. This is such an interesting point because it's about how you feel things. And I think a big issue we're having in our society today there's a lot of illiteracy. There's a lot of uh, people not knowing how to read or write, how to analyze situations correctly. It's so easy to manipulate through social media. We've seen with uh, Cambridge Analytica what has happened with, you know, with the elections and what is happening with what happened with Brexit as well. And what's what's still happening with manipulation through Facebook posts and so on and so forth. I believe that it is through the artist's vision and eye that we can actually save the world. And how do we do that? I think we do that by utilizing less words and just expressing love. This sounds like a cliche concept, but it's actually more revolutionary than you think. I think people that are so stuck into certain notions and believing only in what is told to them or repeated to them, like a mantra through social media or through the news or whatever outlets they're, they're used to seeing... Those people are brainwashed, yes, but there's a way to kind of reel them back in and wake them up. And that is by not arguing with them. That is not by trying to reason with them, because those who know no reason know no words. Hmm. I think it's emotions. It's pure love. Showing affection and love is something that can actually turn people around. Not a, you know, it's a revolutionary concept, if you will, of sorts. Anyway, enough of me babbling. That's Mizia for y'all. Uh, for who's interested on Patreon, every day a new episode. I'm thinking like more like sitcoms, you know, it's like 20 minute episodes every day. It's one chapter and it also gives um, a flow to it so that you have something to look forward to. And for me, it's really, it's, it's tough to read these chapters because a lot of them have a lot of really complex concepts in them. So when I'm recording it, I have prepared also while I'm working on a little behind the scenes as well while I'm recording um, the chapters because they they sound so... I make a lot of mistakes, so I have to repeat a lot and it's kind of really funny to... You get into the emotion of it and sometimes there there's quotes and you have to kind of read as if you were the person th so there's acting there as well. It gets cringy at times, yes. But it, it's a lot of fun and it gives me a rhythm and it gives me kind of a reason to... I don't know, just wake up and keep doing something, have a structure throughout the daily quarantine routine. Yes.